And you guys forget all this so, so quickly. Welcome to the Writer's House. Welcome to the Kelly Writer's House. My name is Al. It's spelled A-L. And the L in many fonts looks like a uh, capital I. So every time in the last four years, I see Al in some social media post. It's actually AI, but I think somebody's addressing me. And I've been fantasizing that a certain amount of Alness will get into a certain amount of AI-ness, and that there will someday come a program, an event at the writer's house, in which those two have a real relationship. <laughs> and I don't want to spoil anything, but that's me. <laughs> oh, and it moves. <laughs> Danny will explain how it's possible to turn an old gray-haired guy into that. It's based on earlier photographs in my life. Anyway, this is a, a very exciting night for us. This is a classic Writer's House 2020-20 event. 20 minutes of one of them, 20 minutes of another. I don't know who's, who's going first. I don't even know. And then 20 minutes of the two of them. Did I get the proportions wrong? 2020-20 sounds right to you? It's about right. It's about right. Yeah. The idea is that in that last sequence, the two of them will be interacting with each other as they do on a daily basis, except they don't always do it in front of an eager audience. Or maybe they do, but anyway. In any case, they're going to converse. They're going to converse. And then we're going to open it up. We have portable mics, like the one I'm using. And we're, we, the people who help organize this thing at the Writer's House, are extremely extremely excited. And I'm not going to take much time to introduce them in, you know, like where they teach, who they are, what they publish. I just want to say a few things about the event and about the things we have to give to you and also a little bit to sell to you. Um, and I'll start by thinking about the origin of this. It turned out that Mashinko is going to come to, Pan to Philly to do some stuff and thought, wow, we should really do something at the Writer's House, because how could you be coming to Philadelphia and not do at least a little something at the Writer's House? And then it turned out that I am, because I'm stupid about these things, I didn't realize how much connection and interanimation, which is the right word, there is between the work of these two, and we realized we had ourselves a natural event, a natural Writer's House event, aside from the fact that both of these lovely people are longtime members of this community, so it's a kind of reunion. And so we're just thrilled that it's happening. Um, we have, and I don't, this must be new for them, we have broadsides. We have broadsides. These are hand, hand done on our press, the Robinson Press, at the Common Press, which is a letter press here at Penn. And these are for you. We're not selling these. These We want you to. Yeah, amazing, right? You can even get these, these guys to sign it for you. And they're out there on the table where we're also selling books. So you really, they're for you. Um, and suitable for framing, I would say. I'm going to give you these. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Allie Katz, where are you? Is Allie back there? Allie, did you have anything to do with the broadside? Okay, somebody did. All right. Um, in addition, we have we have a couple of books. I mean, Eldon poem was written using the in-game messaging system of a game, probably related to this thing over here. Um, and this is Danny's Danny's book, and we're selling this only for whatever it costs us. We don't make any money. Uh, and Mashinka's uh, the Institute of Other Intelligence Intelligences is here and is available as well. And I think it's probably true that if you buy a copy of the book, maybe during the reception, you can find them and they, they will inscribe it for you. I'm guessing that, that that is the case. That is the case. Okay. After the event, we have a reception. It's, with all due respect to some fabulous programs that take place in this room, the reception is the best thing. And the reason is because no matter how long that last 20-minute segment is, 20, um, there's an opportunity for some interaction, but there's nothing like standing around good food and drink and following up with these two fabulous people who are not these days in Philadelphia as often as they should be. So let us welcome them by warm hands being put together 
to make them feel like they've come back to home. Okay, you, this is your job now. Put your hands together for them. He's starting. Danny's starting. On? Is that working? Let's see. You can hear me okay? Oh, great. Um, I can't believe we're back. It's a, it's, re it's, it's a tremendous honor to, to be here. We're so honored to be home, really, at the Kelly Writers House, where um, not only did I you know, have my most formative literary experiences, but uh, the first collaboration we ever worked on uh, was actually back in 2010 uh, around uh, a project with Tom Lin. Um, so it's exceptionally wonderful to be back here. So my sincere thanks to Al, Jessica, Ali, all the staff, and, and, and for this um, wonderful surprise of a broadside, which we knew nothing about. Um, it, it's a rare pleasure and a delight to share this work with all of you, and I want to extend special thanks for you all for coming out um, to be with us. Uh, and of course, it's, it's a tremendous honor to share a stage with Mashenka, Fear, and Sokopian. So uh, here's the plan. Uh, I'm going to present two works uh, as part of the launch uh, to engage with what we've promised, uh, speculative poetics for both video games and AI. Um, and I'll just give you a little bit of background. Uh, on the one hand, I'll be gaming a poem uh, that's playing a, a game's poetic imaginary. And on the other, I'll be poeming a game, um, and, and that's Elden poem. Uh, in other words, bringing poetry game that bringing poetry to a game that really didn't ask for it. Uh, in both works, though, I'm, I'm thinking about the poetics of play and the writing systems that game environments might afford. So first, as a sort of warm up, I'll be reading a, a short excerpt from a virtualization of a game called The Hiss, a, a, a poem called The Hiss. Uh, it uh, drives Remedy's bureaucratic horror action game called Control. And I'll need some help from you in, in the audience uh, for this piece. Uh, you know, I hate, we both really hate participatory artworks, um, but I promise this is minimal. So uh, in contrast to most events, if you all, you all have phones, like, like cell phones, so if you get those out now, um, and uh, they're probably silenced, if you can unsilence them and, and turn the volume all the way up, that's going to be really helpful in just a moment. So uh, please put your phones on full volume. Um, when you see some QR codes, you'll know what to do. We, we've all learned what QR codes in the last few years um, do for a media artist. That was like one of the only upsides of the pandemic is people knew how to do QR codes. Uh, at any rate, um, the hiss, this game should pervade uh, the room if we do it right. Um, that'll be short, but the, the real reason I'm here is to present a full reading of Elden Poem, which explores the in-game messaging system and from software's Elden Ring, uh, which is playing off a Steam Deck over here. Um, oh, wow, that's so good. Thank you. No, you're doing it exactly right. I really appreciate that. Um, it's so nice when you're heard by an audience. Um, uh, so I, I did build um, a, a version of Al, which will be my second playthrough. Uh, that you on Al Pilaris. Um, I, I can't imagine a better companion to traverse the lands between with. Um, so in this game, though, you can leave messages for other players. It's one of the hallmark systems of the game, and I'll, I'll walk through that in a bit. Um, they're drawn from a limited set of textual fragments, though. Uh, people use them to help or hinder or amuse or encourage or distract or troll other players. So in the work I'm about to present, I play a kind of wandering bard, misusing the system to communicate in order to produce the most unlikely of scrawls, of course, small poems uh, that are scattered across the game's landscape. Uh, more on that in a moment. From the outside, I, I, I will just say that um, in both of these works, uh, they're part of an ongoing research project that I'm developing on speculative video games, an academic, you know, proper academic research project um, on how playing or misplaying these games might offer unexpected lessons about contemporary digital technologies. So, you know, there's ways in which these games with their, you know, dark, high fantasy environments might tell us something about what it means to send a text message to each other. Um, I've written about Death Stranding already in tabletop games and VR play uh, toward a poetics of the search as part of the project. Uh, and both of the works I want to present are seeds of extended arguments about messaging systems and archival documents. So perhaps we'll discuss these a bit further in the Q&A, but for now, on the poetics of the thing, uh, I'll save that for conversation. Okay, so I want to start with just a short piece, kind of a warm-up, just to, to, to get moving. Uh, this is a piece called The Hiss. Um, so, okay, how to get started. Uh, maybe we can turn that down just a little bit to play in the background. In 2019, Remedy Entertainment, a video game company, released a supernatural action video game called Control. 
in the game, an insidious aural force, which is called the Hiss, invades and corrupts the reality of a secretive bureaucratic agency, which you can see here, called the Federal Bureau of Control. It's, it's like the FBI, but for like spooky stuff. Um, the hiss in this game takes the form of a self-declared Dadaist poem. It's a cut-up earworm, a looping incantation. You can, you can see that the, the people floating here are sort of chanting it over and over and over again, ad infinitum, as they float aimlessly amidst the brutalist architectures of the game. Now, this poem in the game is never written. You only hear it. The hiss is mysterious, I think, as it is pervasive. So while playing controls, I did, uh, to the tune of this poem, layered and muffled, its refrains repeating dozens upon dozens of hours on end at some point in 2020, I realized, uh, and this might surprise you, Al, that um, I'd heard this one poetic work, this poem, in all of its variants, more than any other poem I'd ever heard in my entire life, uh, despite having worked on poetry and worked for pen sound uh, for many years. And this fact, the fact that this poem is the one I've heard the most, also, I think, rings true resoundingly for like 10 million other people who are playing the game. So in this way, I think I can safely propose that The Hiss is perhaps the single most popular work of poetry to be released in the last five years, right? But, but what does it say? Um, and, and I wanted to kind of parse that. So we'll see. I'll, I'll play a, a bit of a, a VR installation I made of poetic fragments of the game. Uh, this is an installation um, built both as a space to explore but also to rewrite. Uh, earlier today we were talking in a, a Modpo uh, podcast um, about uh, Tristan Zara's newspaper poems where you could cut up the words from poems. It's kind of the origins of Dadaism. Uh, and then recompose something from those fragments. It, it, this poem is written in the same way. I've been interested in trying to think about how it could be rewritten otherwise. OK, so that's where you all come in. Uh, so yeah, see if you play, if you'll open your phone's camera app, scan any of these four images, touch the file link, and turn up to full volume. It's starting. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Oh, a couple of seconds, not minutes. Okay. You are a worm through time. The thunder song distorts you. Happiness comes. White pearls yellow and red in the eye through a mirror inverted is made right leave your insides by the door push the fingers through into the wet you've always the new you want to be true we stand unlike you our you forget more and more now the permission into the Word distorts is redacted. Repeat the word, the name of the sound. It resonates in your face after the song. We build you. The egg cracks out of you. You are reminding us of home. Boss, all hair must drag you away. Time, the fifth, the fourth, the third wall. Dreams, baby, baby, baby. Yeah, ha ha, funny. You have always orange peel you will know you're in new you you listen to dream you want to smile you want to hurt you don't want to be Orange peel, happiness comes, is redacted. You are a worm, the only child. You gave us a copy by the door, a copy, but then you, you forget, forgets you. You have always our words. How do you just plastic, can't stop humming? This cliche is behind the walls of reality. These waves will emerge. You remind us the egg cracks when you hear this we built you 
a copy of a copy of a copy to listen. This happens, a copy you have through the orange peel red in the eye distorts you. You hear this, you want, you're in, you fall, you must want these waves under the conceptual reality. To hurt the last egg, a copy's been here. To hurt hurts to attune you. Till nothing remains distorts you. Happiness comes, the thunder song, white pearls, the picture. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the hiss. So it's a VR installation that you can also inhabit and move the words around and build things. I've been interested in producing spaces, both playing in game spaces. Oh, you can, you can let that lie. It's okay. Um, both in playing in game spaces and thinking about poetry, how poetry might inhabit those spaces, but also thinking about how we might move poetry into the kinds of dimensional spaces that we play in. Uh, VR environments, video games, the kinds of things that populate our screens. And this is really what animated Eldon Poem. Uh, so I, I think it's a, a good warm up. Um, this book was published uh, in print on demand uh, at cost um, and uh, also offered in PDF by Hysterically Real with thanks to Jake Reber and Jotten Rutmoser, the publishers. Um, I'm so happy to have a set here, so please uh, fee feel free to get a copy and I'll try to write something clever. Um, before launching into the reading, though, uh, here's just a quick introduction uh, of the work. Eldon Poem was written using, using the in-game messaging system deployed in From Software's 2022 title, Elden Ring. This dark fantasy social media network comprises runic stones that you place on the ground, composed with a limited set of textual options. You have to use an object called the Tarzan's Wizened Finger. These messages are etched uh, in predetermined phrasal fragments. You only have a few options, and I'll, I'll walk you through this in a moment that may be accompanied by the ghostly traces of gestures that the player character can leave behind. So anyone who's, how many people have played Elden Ring? Is there some? Oh, okay, good, okay. This is, well, this reading's dedicated to you all. Um, anyone can leave, as you know, uh, as, as players well know, a message in the game's environment. Online players discover these messages left by anonymous others throughout the lands between. Messages are commonly used to help, hinder, encourage, troll, amuse, or distract players. So you, you'll just as often encounter a message that's like, oh, there's a hidden chest just around the corner. It's going to have something really valuable for you. And sometimes there's a chest there, and sometimes it's a cliff that leads you straight to your death. Uh, they, they, can do, uh, I, they can go either way. So I think like emoji keyboards and the Uli Po, Elden Ring's messaging system presents constraint-based literary rules for collective invention. In this work, I play a wandering bard, misusing the system to produce the most unlikely of scrawls, small poems scattered across the game's landscape. The book is a documentation of that performance and a prosody marked by the poetics of fandom. They are recorded here as movie captures, static images, and poetic texts arranged in four parts, spelling a newly coherent object. In a past life, these poems inhabited the gaming environment itself. Though subject to the ongoing erasure of message limits and time-based access, they've already begun to dissolve, rendered as ephemeral as the hours one spends at play. 
Here for a moment, spell sword meets spells word and the materialization of play inscribes a poetics of digital messaging. So let me give you just a quick example uh, of what's going on. And I think you can turn the volume up maybe just a touch. Can you all hear soft horn? Sure. So um, I've started using the Tarzan Wizen's finger. You have a series of options of templates. The, the templates allow you to place certain words in, in really delimited formats. You have things like things, actions, places, concepts. They're all related by just one conjunction, not two. Um, and there's only a few conjunctions you can use, um, followed by a second template and a second object. So this one spells out, if only I had a joy, so to speak, still no. I was having a hard time deciding. Comfort. And then you get to add a little ghostly gesture to the inscription. Dejection seems right. So the player then writes it, and once you've written that into the game, anyone else who's playing the game can come across your message, they can rate it, they can respond to it, uh, and it kind of lives in the game for other players. So as you're playing the game, you're also actively writing the game. Uh, this revelation to me um, was really interesting in terms of thinking about digital messages at large. We often think about just using the internet, but every time we use the internet, the internet is also using us, and we are involved in its active and ongoing inscription. Um, so, with that said, um, I'll jump right into a reading. Um, these are the poems I wrote in Elden Ring. The book is broken into four sections, uh, which acrostically spell out a very clever word. Uh, I will um, kind of break them up as, as uh, a longtime audio segmenter, uh, Penn Sound, before I came to graduate study, actually. Uh, I'm well aware of the use of this kind of reading signaling. <laughs> so uh, future segmenters, the, the sections are play, odes, ends, and messages. I'll tell you a bit about each of them as I go. So first is play. Um, this section emerges, uh, engages with the vernacular forms of the game more directly, adopting some of the more playful elements of the messaging system, pointing to inside jokes, those players among you will recognize them, uh, if you know, you know, uh, or playful mechanics in the game itself, the absurdity of its characters, the wild imaginary of its milieu, the hilarity of dying again and again. So can we turn down the lights a little bit? Is that possible? I'll, I'll just kind of read through some poems. Okay, poetry reading starts. And we can turn up the sound probably a little bit. Praise the incantation, so to speak, let there be sound. Praise the sound, so to speak, ah, uh, old dear. Recklessness ahead, behold, chaos. Try fingers, but hope. Praise the tarnished, but why is it always tarnished? Be wary of order. In short, praise the chaos. Praise the pauper. No fat coin purse ahead. Be wary of aristocrat. Therefore, try taking on all at once. Praise the sacrifice. All the more, still no resignation. Be wary of regret, therefore, praise the chaos. If only I had a lover, and then, behold, old dear. Visions of love, therefore, don't give up. If only I had a lover, and then, praise the lovable sort. Behold, old dear, in short, could this be a lover? Be wary of dashing through. In short, praise the laggardly sort. Behold, lover. In short, let there be comfort. Sorry, content warning. Why is it always betrayal, so to speak, time for friendship? Let there be friendship. Therefore, praise the old dear. Could this be a secret passage, except first off, tranquility? Behold rump, in short, praise the sinner. If only I had a fat coin purse, and then let there be chaos. Behold beating to a pulp, in short, visions of boss. Why is it always tarnished? All the more, could this be a teacher? 
visions of teacher, all the more time for think carefully. Visions of abundance, therefore, try bliss. Behold abundance, therefore, recklessness ahead. Didn't expect bright spot, except sacrifice required ahead. Ah, bright spot, all the more visions of coffin. Visions of it's like a dream and then it's like a dream. Oh, it's like a dream. Could this be a brief respite? So to speak, why is it always you don't have the right? Okay, the next section is odes. Uh, the first one was thinking about play and playing with the game and the characters, uh, recognizing them and pointing to them. Um, in this, I adopt the object o object format to address specific characters and features of the game. As a whole, the book is an ode, I think, to Elden Ring, um, which is made most direct here. Chaos, oh chaos, all the more ah, uh, chaos. Dog, oh dog, all the, this is really just for the Elden Ring fans. Um, this, this like Pope Turtle, uh, there's a reason that everything is called a dog in the game, but I'll just, all the more praise the dog. Elden Ring, oh Elden Ring, in short, behold destruction. Giant sword, oh giant sword, in short, mountain, oh mountain. Good sword, oh good sword, in short, still no god. Invisible sword, oh invisible sword, in short, why is it always tranquility? Laggardly sword, oh laggardly sword, in short, could this be a tranquility? Lovable sword, oh lovable sword, in short, healing, where did you go? required ahead. Monstrosity, oh monstrosity, in short, why is it always misfortune? Nimble sort, oh nimble sort, in short, let there be stealth. Pathetic sort, oh pathetic sort, in short, why is it always weak foe? Strange sort, oh strange sort, in short, praise the secret passage. Unfathomable sort, oh unfathomable sort, in short, let there be death. Wicked sort, oh wicked sort, in short, visions of merchant. You don't have the right, oh you don't have the right, all the more, you don't have the right, oh you don't have the right. In ends, I take some of the existential and philosophical claims of the game a bit more seriously than in the last two sections. Even within a limited system, this tightly constrained set of words you can use, I think that there's still room for interrogating failure, death, religion, class, power, and sundry existential questions of being in the world beyond. Playing this game, as, as I did, and I know now many of you have, for dozens of hours, sometimes with futility, sometimes with a sense of wonder, led me to a contemplative state not unlike, I think, romantic imagery, more common to poetry, in the figure of urns or some sublime mountain landscape. Over the past few years, many of the most meaningful experiences that I have had of a space have been found in virtual environments and such as this. So I've tried to inscribe some of those moments. I can't, uh, first off, I've failed. Therefore, I've failed, oh, I've failed. I can't take this, so to speak, futility. Visions of procession, but just getting started. Visions of injustice, but why is it always wrath? Visions of champion, but ah, pathetic sort. Visions of something incredible, but suffering, oh, suffering. Visions of trap, so to speak, could this be a betrayal? Could this be a lord except visions of defeat? Visions of suffering, in short, still no faith. Try faith, but why is it always suffering? Try jumping, but death, 
Oh, death. Try life or no life ahead. That's as close as I could get to Shakespeare. It's like going on. Still no God, but so to speak, be wary of death. If only I had a love, but why is it always fleeing? If only I had a joy, by the way, why is it always decoy? No old deer ahead, therefore be wary of brief respite. Try backstepping and then seek hiding place. Seek sleep, so to speak. Seek sleep. Behold sleep, so to speak. Time for sleep. I wrote a lot of these poems kind of late. Still no God, all the more visions of bloodstain. Seek defeat, so to speak. Seek defeat. Behold cleric, by the way, time for taking on all at once. If only I had an ill-omened creature. In short, behold, aristocrat. Behold aristocrat. In short, why is it always dung? Ah, not here, and then here again. Oh, here again. Didn't expect seems familiar, but why is it always unnoticed? Ah, gorgeous view, except despair. Oh, despair. Time for fire. All the more visions of ruin. Okay, one last section. Uh, finally, in messages, uh, this last section, you'll hear an attempt to an exhaust to exhaust the messaging system. Uh, this follows an effort to let platforms or writing systems speak for themselves. So instead of injecting them with my content, cycling through each option in a limited capacity to feel out the contours of what's made possible by these platforms. At its core, the Elden Ring message system is both an attempt to reach others with your words, but it's also a call for help. Um, when you praise a message, when you basically like it, you're literally giving life uh, to its sender. Um, so in the game, every time that somebody likes one of your messages, you get a little health boost. Um, of course, uh, this leads to many calls in the game to praise the message, something that's like a refrain, people begging, nearing a kind of religious litany. More poignantly, it's also a plea for help, like a prayer, not to a deity though, uh, more like a prayer uh, to a community at play. So, some messages. Message ahead and then praise the message. No message ahead and then praise the message. Message required ahead and then praise the message. Be wary of message and then praise the message. Try message and then praise the message. Likely message and then praise the message. First off, message and then praise the message. Seek message and then praise the message. Still no message and then praise the message. Why is it always message and then praise the message? If only I had a message and then praise the message. Didn't expect message and then praise the message. Visions of message and then praise the message. Could this be a message and then Praise the message. Time for message and then praise the message. Message, oh message, and then praise the message. Behold, message, and then praise the message. Offer message and then praise the message. Praise the message and then praise the message. Let there be message and then praise the message. Ah, message and then praise the message. Message. In short, praise the message. Message, and then praise the message. Message, and then praise the message. Message, and then praise the message. So the book ends uh, with a very short quatrain on the blood stain. I think my favorite um, object in the book. Blood stain, oh blood stain, why is it always here again? Bloodstain, oh bloodstain, here again, oh here again. Bloodstain, oh bloodstain, be wary of rain. Bloodstain, oh bloodstain, why is it always here again? <laughs>